Hi everyone, we want to know what happened after the Kyoto Protocol. I am going to tell you. Welcome back to the channel. Those who are watching for the first time, I would say that this is in continuation to our previous episode on global environmental programs. And this is part 3. Now just a fast review of what we have already discussed. Look at this flowchart and pause the video and observe what we have already covered. Or what you can do, uh, click the link right below. Now in this short video, we will start what happened after the Kyoto Protocol. In the series of COPs, two visible events took place. One at Copenhagen in the year 2009 and another at Paris in the year 2015. Both were focused on the issue of the climate change. The Copenhagen conference was a flop show and the Paris agreement was the effort to revive the climate change talks. Let's in the beginning uh, be clear about one thing that the UNFCCC created a platform for COPES. So both 2009 Copenhagen and 2015 Paris agree agreements are actually COPES. I mean Copenhagen is COP15 and the Paris agreement is COP21. So we are starting from COP15. The COP15 was hosted by the Nordic country that was Denmark and it was organized when there was a change in the US administration. Remember we have already discussed that in 2001 U.S. left the Kyoto Protocol. Now in 2009, Democrat Barack Obama won a decisive victory over the Republicans, meaning over the party of the George Bush. So therefore there was hope in Europe that Obama will rejoin the COP talks, but in the end, the result was the same. Let's see what, ha what happened in the proposed talks and why this deal went badly wrong. Copenhagen was expected to develop a practical climate change cooperation and the improvement in the carbon credit mechanism. Those who want to understand this mechanism or CMD, please find the link below in part 2. The closer look of the projects given through the carbon credit mechanism shows that they were given to the chosen one. That means the same human weakness of the favoritism. Now let us go further. The hopes and expectations in the conference was very high. I should say rocket high. The reason was that there was a change in US administration. Secondly, we human beings work or respond to immediate threat. And this danger came from the IPCC in 2007, meaning just two years before the Copenhagen conference. This 2007 report called for the urgent action to combat the climate change. Plus, you also know that the Kyoto Protocol was nearing to its end. So the pressure was there at the Copenhagen. Similarly, this IPCC report was also utilized by the NGOs and climate activists to build the pressure on the governments. I mean the authorities in the Western world where the awareness and seriousness about this issue is more. The increasing coverage in the media about the climate change also brought some positive behavioral changes among the people to think about the issue. But all this actually resulted in a failure. And this failure was also recorded in the history. Let us see what is the history behind this failure. The primary reason for the failure was of course the trust deficit. I mean the developed countries were working or lobbying behind the scene to get the approval for the suitably designed documents. Meaning their proposal was to avoid the targets and to make the climate deal as flexible as possible. So this secret lobbying was leaked in the newspapers which ultimately eroded the credibility of this conference. And you know that this the trust is the most desirable value for the success of any negotiation. Like you go to market, purchase something, so in that the trust is which makes the deal possible. And similarly, other reasons for the failure is that the venue for more than 40,000 people representing governments across the continents, NGOs and the faith-based organizations were, was actually very, very small. One should understand that the international conference of such standard requires special arrangements in which the Danish government sadly failed. 
Similarly, the late arrival of the Barack Obama further eroded the morale of the conference. He came just two days before the end of the conference. So sometimes high expectations from someone can also result in regret. Uh, so this was the case again from the US side. The lack of transparency in giving of the carbon credit was another reason for the failure. In a nutshell, this conference is rightly termed as flop and hagen or in the history of climate talks, it will remain as only a political accord. After the Copenhagen summit, other important climate talks were held at Doha 2012, Warsaw 2013, Lima 2014, and then the Paris in December 2015, and that was the most important among just now mentioned. The vital feature of the Paris conference was the binding commitment for both developed and developing countries to reduce the greenhouse gases. But still the targets were weak and I should say lazy. Here you should remember in Kyoto the binding commitments was only for the developed countries. In context to financial obligations, the Paris was again failure. And from US side the story was the same as it was at Kyoto and Copenhagen. So this Paris Agreement was again discussed in 2019 at Katowice, which is a famous industrial city of Poland. So with this, we end the present video and in the next unit, we will learn about 17 Sustainable Development Goals. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know by writing your comments and subscribe my channel. So thanks for listening and watching.